Hello. Today, I'm going to show you how to solve this differential equation where we have dy dx is equal to y. So basically, the rate of change of a function is equal to the function itself. Now, we're going to use a technique called separation of variables. This involves bringing all of one variable to one side and all of the other variable to the other side. So for example, in this one, we're going to bring all the y's to the left and all the x's to the right. It's kind of invalid because we want to treat dy dx as a fraction and it's not a fraction. But this method provides solutions which are correct, so we use it anyway. So we need to bring all our y's to the left, so we're going to divide by y. And then we're going to, on the next line, bring all of our x's, and in this case it's only the dx, to the right hand side. So this is kind of the invalid step, because we're not allowed to multiply by dx, but it works. And now as long as we integrate both sides straight away, everything should be fine. So our left hand side, the integral of 1 over y with respect to y, is going to be the logarithm of the modulus of y. Modulus because the logarithm can only take in positive values. And the right hand side then we have, this is like 1 dx. So it's just going to give us x and then our plus c as well. So next step then, we're going to take exponentials to both sides. So e to the logarithm of the modulus of y is equal to e to the x plus c. So we can do two steps in once here. We can see that our, our e and our log are going to cancel out. So we're left with on the left hand side just y, or the modulus of y. And on the right hand side, we're going to separate this out into two different exponentials using the power laws. So this is e to the x, e to the c. So e to the c is still a constant, so we're just going to relabel it. So if we let a equals e to the c, which we can see is completely fine, we're just relabeling it to something else, just to make it a little bit neater when we write our final answer. Next, then we're going to have modulus of y is equal to a e to the x. And now we can kind of inspect this and try and get rid of the modulus signs. So we know our e to the c, which we're calling a, is going to be positive because all exponentials are positive. So for the same logic, our e to the x as well is strictly positive. So we can remove our modulus signs because we know then that the entire right-hand side, e to the x, is greater than zero. So our modulus signs are not really doing anything in this case. They give the same answer whether they're there or not. So our final answer then, the general solution to this is y is equal to a, e to the x. Beautiful.